Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Meher. For those of you who do not know us, let me give you a quick background of who we are. So for over 20 years, we've been helping companies create and bring their design projects to life. We specialize in the training, implementation, and integration of 3D design and 3D printing solutions throughout North America. Today, we're gonna to take your knowledge of the 3D Experience platform one step further with this presentation focused on the practical uses of powerful and intuitive tools for composite engineering. With me, I have Nick, one of our application specialists. He'll take the floor and start the presentation now. Please don't hesitate to ask any questions. They'll be answered at the end of the presentation. Nick? Thank you very much, Mayor. Okay, so, um... I will. Uh, we, we have approximately 14 attendees, uh, Mayor, and it's almost uh, two. So we will just uh, wait for one more or 30 more seconds for people to join, and then um, I will. I will start uh, my site, I believe. Okay, we have two more. Okay, great. Let's start. It's uh, almost 2.02. So, hello friends. Uh, my name is Nick, and I want to welcome you for this uh, Composites webinar for January 2021. This is the part of our ongoing uh, initiative at Solid Experience to introduce our customers and potential users to the industry or domain specific roles offered on 3DX platform. Now, when you see my screen where it is like Solid Experience Mechanica from this year, uh, 1st of Jan, we have combined all the companies, which is Solid Experts Mechanica and others under one banner of solid experience to bring to our customers everything under the one roof as a, as a collective solution provider for your Kitia SolidWorks platform and data manufacturing needs. So today I'm going to present you the functionalities available on the platform for composites engineering rules. Uh, during my session, all the attendees will be muted. But if you have any questions, like Mayor said, please raise your hand or type the question, or we will take it up in the end of the session and try to answer it. Or if somebody needs a specific attention, we can uh, uh, schedule another meeting down the line to help you out. So now I will start a quick uh, PowerPoint followed by a live demonstration of composites design and manufacturing capabilities to show you the look and feel of complete end-to-end -end solution on 3DX platform, which can fit in your current or future needs. So for keeping your screen big, I will take off my camera and uh, I believe you can see this uh, PowerPoint. This is like a quick overview of what type of roles are available on the platform. So if you see that there are different type of roles depending upon your industry or your domain, where you can pick from, like if it is a composites designer, that is a single role, which will give you the capabilities to design your complex composite parts and do some of the manufacturing. Then there is something called composites manufacturer where you have more producibility and other flattening or transfer of the, uh, like a tax or other type of thing on the, on, on, the, on the flattened ply profiles. Then there is one like a combined role, which is like a composites and design and manufacturer, which gives you both of those functionalities plus 
It includes the laser projection operator um, role on top of it. And now in on the platform, the fiber modeler is automatically built in. So you don't have to ha add an external one. So just to give you a very quick brief of how the composites um, design work and what are the functionalities which are available on the platform. The first one is the basic manual approach. So if you even if you have a, a composites manufacturer role, you can do this. So you have the uh, base surface and you can draw your contours and then convert it into the plies, stacking and work with that. The other approaches, which is a zone based approach, which is there for many years for all of our old even uh, B5 users. And uh, that is based on a zone. But now there is a new approach, which is a grid based approach. And that can work very effectively, very associative type of a methodology of designing composite parts, uh, which we'll talk about today. And Next is like a very generic one, which is solid slicing, that if you start with a solid, then you can slice it and convert it into the plies. And the final one is like a very, very conventional approach where you start with a Excel or a text table and convert it into the plies. But the primary power of the platform lies in grid-based approach and the producibility, which I'm going to show you today. So this is my um, uh, demo contents, which you all been uh, uh, circulated uh, with the invite. And we'll cover this. And uh, in the end, this is uh, my signature. Like if anybody wants to reach us, Meher, myself, or any or for marketing or sales team, for any support, we can uh, do that. So now let's begin the live demonstration. Here, uh, I will try to flip uh, quickly my screen to the web client, we call it. I believe uh, you can see this, uh, Meher. Can you just quickly confirm? Yep. OK, thanks. So this, what I'm showing you, is the platform look of the web client of uh, 3DX. The way it is that this is currently, I'm showing you the dash, dash 3D dashboard. And here we can have different dashboards based on our needs. Uh, if I click on uh, my compass on the top, this shows me that what are my roles. And roles are, you can consider it like the software licenses which you buy to give you the ability to use a given functionality on the platform. So these are the roles definition. I have too many roles because I'm a consultant and I want to touch base on multiple different topics. Then these are my favorite ones, which you can pick for a given project or for a given day that which I will try to use today. And this is my all my apps which are available, which could run into hundreds because my I have too many roles. I, I from here, if I if I can start my native client, we call it from uh, the platform, or we can uh, start it from our desktop. But I have already started one, so because it takes time for the demo, I made it easy. And if you see that, when I go there, this is my native client. That was web client. This is my native client where we do the actual design review. All the engineering is done on this side. And that is for the review and the product management and other type of stuff, which is on the website. So here, again, this compass is available and you can launch your uh, same roles or apps from here. This is what is the user interface on the platform for Kitia. Here, for the purpose of this demo, I have my own collab space, which is a separate container where I have created my own files for this specific demonstrations. And I keep doing for different type of, uh, uh, you, can, you can consider it as a space for your given project or type of work you are doing for a given client or a client-based space which we can create. And that is all that is possible 
on the product data management side of the platform. And we have a very smart team to help our customers to enable and help uh, operate that. So currently, I will just dive into live demonstration of showing you that how we can do a grid-based uh, composite design of a part and then do some producibility on that, creating some flattening, flat and plies and some drawings. So that is my agenda for today's and review it on the platform. So I go here and this is a top bar, which is a search and I search, and this is called like a six tag search, which is where, what, when, who, how, why. Very, very um, uh, intuitive and extensive search, which is possible to narrow down your search to figure out or get to a, a given type of uh, object in your database, which are being stored. So here I want to search in my uh, composites demo collab space, and I have these files there. So I want to start the start part, multiple ways to handle it. I right click on that. And I say open. And here it is bringing the part from the database on my native client and like you see because it is a composite part and my last use app was composite design on the top here you see that i am in the kitia composite design app uh, the people who are coming from v5 apps are equal to your workbenches in the v5 terminology here again you have the uh, specification tree where everything which i will do on this part will get stored in this tree in a given node, and we will work from here. So this is a winglet, uh, a, you know, uh, a tip of a wing. If I show you the complete data here, in the background, this is how, it, uh, what the whole surfaces are, but we are only trying to do on the top. So that's why we have only uh, kept in a show mode, the top surface and some of the other structural grid, uh, uh, grid support features. Also, like uh, some construction geometry where this top surface is created and other surfaces are there. The most important thing here to look for is that there is a composite parameters. And this is where, uh, as, a, as a user, the best practice should start. And there's a red symbol here. So let's talk about what it is. So let's expand that. So in the composite parameters, I can define the material use, orientations, laminates, and other stuff. But if I double click on that and take a look at what is being defined here, if you see that the material name is there, but none of the material properties are loaded. I can add more material. For the purpose of this demonstration, there's only one carbon.33 thickness material, which has been there, but I can have Kevlar, glass, whatever I want to use, that's not an issue. But if I select that, I can add and remove the material, or I can say I want to read out this material because this is not loaded, because I just loaded this part fresh, and the material is not synced to this part. And that is why it is just showing in the tree. Tree of Kitia is very, very interactive. It shows you everything what is going on the design. If the user is watching the tree, you can um, be very, very helpful in your um, um, whole design process. So I start want to load it from the database. I click on that. Again, the top search, I want to search for the carbon. And I go here, and in this, I want I don't want all the materials which are there, but I want to only go for that specific collab space. So you see that the search is narrowed down, and I click this carbon, and here I am. It is loaded, and now you see that all the material properties are populated here. So it could it is like their limit angles, their weight, uh, their wrap. Uh, and rep angle, material dimensions, roll size, whatever. The next one is that if I go to the next tab on this, which is the directions, here I store the directions of the ply, which I will uh, use. So it is zero, is yellow, uh, uh, 50, 45 degrees will be shown in red, 90 in blue, and 45, minus 45 in green. I can add more directions if I want. If I'm making a complex part and I want one ply going at a 30 degrees also, I can do that. But for this purpose, let's keep this four. 
The next one is the laminate definition. The laminate definition is that how will be the diff how in the different areas of the spot, which is here, you will have the stacking of the flies. So let's say if I can add a laminate, I can remove or I can edit. So if I select this, then this edit button comes up and I go OK. And here it shows that this is the name of this laminate is LAM01. This is the color, the way it will show up on the pot. And this is the stacking of the ply. So 0, 45, 90, 45, 0, and the other side is 0, 45, 90, 45, 0, like that. 11 plies there in this laminate. There are two ways to define it. Either I can go by stacking sequence, or you can go by thickness law, where you define the thickness. Thickness is shown, and I will say, I want this many plies in 0 degree, this many plies in 45, blah, blah, blah. And then it will tell me what is my thickness. So if I'm going governing my laminate by the thickness law, I can do that, or by the stacking, I can do that. Once this has been done, then there is a main uh, stacking sequence which can be handled or the RAM definitions. And this is very important because this is what I'm discussing and showing you today, the grid-based approach. And that is where this ramp definition come into play. These are the predefined ramps. I can add them, remove, or edit, like, I, for, like for every other um, parameter here. But you will see the use of this when I am start showing you the grid approach. So once the composites uh, parameters are defined and I'm good to go, I say, OK. And now this is the user interface of the uh, plat uh, Kitia on platform. So I go to grid approach to do the grid-based design. Zone design tab gives me the commands to do the zone-based design. Ply design is a manual approach, which I told you you can use one, one by one ply and make it. And then there are other tabs to do producibility, solids from the fly, which we'll talk about during this course of this demonstration. So now if I go to this uh, grid design, the composites parameters can be accessed from this icon too. But the first one is I want to define the grid panel. And what is a grid panel and what does that mean? You will watch in the next few minutes. This is the definition. So let's drag the part here. I keep it like this. And this is the panel to define the grid definition. The first thing to pick is the base surface, which is the top surface of this winglet here on the top. I select that. And then based on that selected, automatically the rosettes is selected because the rosette which you're showing seen here is um, automatically define the composite parameters. If I want, I can transfer this rosette throughout this part and see that how these uh, apply directions will be transformed from this point to other points also. So that is also doable. So now in this, in the panel definition, the first one, I have to define different uh, reference element groups. The first one I will try to make as the ribs going across the swing. So I will name it to ribs and I hit re uh, rename group. And then I will, there is a structural support geometrical set here where I have separa uh, separated my features to use for different uh, definitions of this grid. This is a good practice to use Katia V5 so that you can keep all your different uh, wireframe or surface entities in separate containers. So like I go like this, so you see that based on this plane and the surface, there's an intersection getting created. I can create plane two, plane three. If you want, you can click the planes from here also or from the pot, doesn't matter. So these are the uh, uh, six ribs defined. Similarly, I go, I want to add another elements group. And this one, I want to pick the surfaces which are on the say forward boundary forward stringer aft stringer aft boundary and these are defined like here in this uh, dalek box here if i want to change the name of this i can go here and i say i want a strangers and i say apply they all change and now if you see in the tree there's a new node which is getting created where all these grids uh, definition are defined. I'm only using for the purpose of demo two element groups, but in a complex part, you can try more and it works. 
Once this is being defined, here we have to define the ramp definition. So I want to say, I want to edit the ramp definition for this. And I want the same ramp definition on both sides of this uh, member. These are the predefined ones, which I showed you are almost def already defined in the composite uh, parameters, but I will show you how to define very quickly a new one if I want to. So the panel opens and you can define the criteria that how the curves will be created, parallel offset, offset parallel, different ways. And then I want this, and I want that this to be 2.54 offset, and this to be slope of 2.5, uh, uh, step of 2.54. This is one way of defining. There are multiple different ways of rate, angle, slope. We can define that. Once I do this, because I say same on the both sides, positive or neg negative, you will see it that this is positive and negative, same side. And I'm also enabling substraggering. Substraggering means that in an individual section, if I want to change this, I can do that. So this is being defined here. So the first offset is 2.54, and then remaining are 2.54. If I go and change this, I can, I will be able to change that too. If I go to the second one, I want to edit the ramp definition for the stingers. And I this time I will go from this drop down and I will pick uh, this one. And I say, okay, now you will see that and say, okay. Now, if you watch again, this is the ramp definition to pick the plies and the plies will be up automatically be selected based on this. That is what is the beauty of this grid based design. And if you go on the rib group, then this is your uh, straggling or uh, the ramp definition. Once this, is, uh, once this is defined here and uh, we are good, we can say that good, I like this, and I go, I say, okay. So now the grid panel definition is defined. It is fully and interactive and associative. Later, if you want to change it, you can go and change, add or remove the um, elements in every def, uh, support definition and the whole part will update accordingly. Now, if you see that after this has been defined, the next button is the defining the grid. So I go to that grid. What happens is automatically, based on the intersection of those two support groups, which is defined, the whole part is divided into separate cells. And you see in this window that these are the cells uh, which are being defined. And it tells you that what are the elements which are creating that cell. Now let's turn this part this way just to show you in a perspective that how this will be installed at the tip of the wing. And now if I go and I start picking, multi-selecting these cells like that, either you can do it in the 3D or you can do it in that uh, window, doesn't matter. These are all selected here. I say edit and here I want to add a laminate definition that these cells, the laminate definition is like this. And I say, okay, now the color of those cells will change to the, to the color of the laminate, which tells the user that, that these cells are being assigned. I pick this one and I go edit, and it is very interactive. I go, I want the lamp two for that cell. Now for the, all the remaining, I'm going in this uh, dialog box and picking it from there and I go edit and I can go here and I can say this is my uh, laminate three in that, that areas and I go okay and this is defined. Now, if you want, you can also go to the display options and instead of cell names, you can say define which, lam which laminate is being defined for those cells or you can say the thickness law which tells you how many plies are there. So there are three plies, these are 11 plies, these are seven plies. Or you can go by number of plies, which I just told you, and or the thickness, whatever you want to display, everything is possible. And I say, okay. So now the uh, definition of the grid is there. Once the grid definition is defined, the next button comes up, which is virtual stacking. Now, if you realize this, all these other buttons are grayed out. So this is called a user assist, assist way of uh, helping 
the designers and users of a platform so that they can navigate through this. Uh, and you cannot pick any other command if you cannot use it at this stage of the design. You are only allowed to do what you can do where you are in your design process. So now uh, it helps because now the user don't have to remember all the all the where the command is and not not located. It is giving you uh, assisted um, options. So now if I go, the next one is to create a virtual stacking. And what is virtual stacking? Virtual stacking is before you actually create the plies and load this part with heavy data of the ply definitions, you can virtually see that what and how those plies will look like. So I go here and I pick this grid. And uh, this is a definition of the, uh, this, is a, this, is a, this is a window or a panel to show you the virtual stacking based on you can look at for based on the plies which will be which will be created they are not there yet sequence stacking area and it tells you that how these plies are now if you watch on this um, window there is a warning which is showing in this red because the actual complete stacking is not symmetrical so what i can do here i can pick the ply number four and I can say I want to swap that with the ply number six. And automatically you see that the stacking has been changed and now it is more symmetrical. This is only 11 plies. This could be 50 to 100 plies. It is very easy to manage. There are other principles and uh, options available, which when our customers adapt the solution we go through a detailed training to explain all these steps and then you can also even preview this that based on that i want like a no crossing or a minimum um, a minimum crossing and a less weight or complete weight saving a way to uh, uh, stagger these plies but based on that what i have selected i say okay so now the virtual stacking is defined Based on this virtual stacking now, I can actually create the plies from this virtual stacking. And I go like that and the same review or the uh, which, which, is, or which, is, which, which, was, which was in the virtual stacking uh, panel is now here. And the algorithm is minimum crossing, minimum crossing and weight saving or whatever. Also, you can define the drop off uh, pattern. This is like a backlash cross different uh, special like uh, military uh, parts require some special type of uh, backdrops or you can create your own if you want but let's take with the simple backlash which is very common in the industry and say okay and as soon as i press this button okay you will see that a new node will be created in the tree and the whole plies are created so let's say i will hide this grid definition i will also hide the structural support and you will see that all the plies based on that definition of the grid is created for this part. And I have the virtual stacking engineering here. I go here. This is one ply group is created, sequence ply. All these things depends upon how you are designing the part. If only one, bar, one, one technician on the floor is laying the whole ply, uh, whole ply or there are two people are working simultaneously on the two sides of the job we can that is like the details of planning the work for a specific customer for a specific need which can be discussed at the time of deployment of the solution but here what we have is that currently i can double click on the stacking engineering it's a very interactive tool to handle the complete stacking i can go to the columns i can i can decide that what i want to see the cut pieces even the areas length center of gravities of these plies can be even if there's a limit contours or darts, all those things can be seen in this panel. This is a complete picture of this composite part, what you have currently done. Now, one more thing which you can do here is that I can also do this. That say, for example, I go and I select all of these and I want to rename these plies or sequence. Depending upon what I am selected on the top here, I go here and I say I want to uh edit all the rows and this is very cool all, all the material is all the same orientation you can change one by one if i want if you want to this is where you can change individual plies 
and their material orientation or the rosette, whatever you're doing. But here, what I want to show you is that I want to type that every ply should not be called ply one, but it should be called nick dash ply double dash, uh, starting with one, or you can say starting index with 10, with the step of one, the digits will be three, sorry. And I say, okay, now you will watch this area, it automatically renamed all the plies. And once I say, okay, I will go here and they renamed here also. So that is what is uh, what can be done in the stacking management. Every ply can be handled or multiple plies can be handled. Their definitions can be changed. Now, once uh, this uh, uh, plies are created, the next thing is that if I want to actually create the solid from these plies. So if I want to create the solid from these plies, I go to this um, solid and the top surface from the plies tab. And here I have this command, which can automatically identify the ISO thickness areas of this panel based on the definitions of the ply stacker. So I go here and I say that for the ply group one, which is this one, I want to say that I want to compute the uh, areas with a five millimeters width minimum and I compute it. So it has computed the areas. There are three things which are created here, but you will not see it because it is, I hide the plies and I can hide the construction features and you see that. So this is the areas which are defined automatically, which are ISO thickness based on the definition of our ply stacking. Now, from this, there are two ways to convert, uh, to make join these uh, endpoints to how this will, how the transition of these areas where the thickness of the part is changing. Either I can do it with a visit, which is a semi-automated process or manual, which is this button. So let's go, I do this. And I say that for, for this group, I want to try to compute automatically the junction lines. So it creates the junction lines. It gives in this panel that how many uh, curve entities it is creating and they are all good. If they are not good, there's a way to fix them. So this is a groups of the iso thickness areas. This is the junction lines. The next is I want to create the solid from the these two. So I go here, ISO thickness group is this, and the junction lines, I can pick this geo set because automatically the software is making another container, which is called a geometric set, and only those six curves are in that. So you can, instead of going one by one, I can pick this, six elements are selected. Good, I got it. So now what it does it, if I go here and hide these, and I hide these, what it has done is it has created a solid, which is representing the somehow well, somewhat the cured part with these transitional areas defined smoothly. And this is not showing the steps or something which the other solutions show. And that is what, uh, uh, you know, uh, this is working. Now, if I go to the construction geometry again, and I hide my solid for now, and I want to show you some of the review functionality where that how, if I want to create and see the ply sections, actual ply sections from different areas of this part, or I want to do some core sampling or something like that. Okay, so for, if, for, for doing that, what I will do is I will quickly go, I can pick any plane to create the um, ply sections, but I will try to show you another advanced functionality here. I will go to shape tools. These are the wireframe and surface tools available inside the composite design app. And I want to create a line. Let's say I want to create a line. I don't have the points. So in Kitia, there's a very intuitive way of calling a command inside a command. So I want to create a point first. So instead of line, I call a point command and I want a point on this curve and say, I want that point to be here. Okay, so that is the point. I want the other point say here. So I go right click, I want a point created on this edge, say here. And this is creating a line from 
point to point, but I can force that line to lie on the surface. This is the key to your functionality, so it becomes a curve. The definition is line, but it is following the complex surface. So this is how I define that curve, and I will use that to create my ply sections. So I take a ply section, I can select the groups of the plies depending upon the complexity of the part, or I can say the complete stacking, everything, and I can pick the planes or the curves. So I pick this curve and I define that either I want the uh, semantics or I want the realistic uh, uh, picture and I want all plies to be shown in fill color. I do a define a fail scaling factor and I say apply. And based on the draping direction, it will create it. And I will just reverse my part to show you because the draping direction is on the other side. So this is a tool position. This is how the plies are laid. And you can see all the plies which are being created in this approach. And you can highlight here and it will show what are those plies. It, it shows graphically what it is. And okay. Now, if you watch this, this ply which I swapped, now this is symmetrical. Otherwise, if I have not done that in my virtual stacking or stacking, then this will not be, uh, this part will not be designed like in this approach. Okay. Now, the next thing is that I want to show some of the core sampling points to so check what is it. So let's say I want a core sampling on the surface and I will pick one point here. So this is 11 plies are going to that, that section. Three plies are going here. If I go here, there will be again seven plies. If I go here, there will be 11 plies again. So that is how the whole thing is uh, giving me the core sampling. It is defining. I keep those points because I will try to show you something in the drawing using this uh, core sampling points too. So now, once uh, all this uh, is defined in the review, the next thing which comes into play is that how we can run the producibility on these plies. So for doing that, what we will do is I will change my tab to producibility. And in the producibility, what happens is that they are either it is a manual approach or it is a very effective uh, producibility table approach where you can handle all the plies which are in the stacking in one shot. So if you look at like this, uh, let me adjust this window slightly. This is this window is showing all the plies which are there in this whole stacking. I select the ply one, say, first of all. I say I want to do a hand layer, though there is an option of using a fiber placement or even the braiding. The customers who are using the braiding, uh, they can use that too. But let's say I want to use a hand layer. And I say I want to run it. So it is running the producibility of the supply on this tool and showing you that how it will be laid. If I don't like this or with the seed point, I can hit edit button and I can go here and I can say that I want to optimize it. So here is by default, it is a geometrical center seed point here, but I want to optimize and I can decide optimize on what objective the shear angle weighted or energy weighted or whatever. And I can define how many points. Earlier, I only used to see 10 or 15, but now in 2021 X, they have, in, Dassault has improved this so much that I can run the 50 point optimization very quickly in a couple of seconds, see? So now the software is giving you the option that how the, what other 50 points are possible. So let's say I want to pick this one. I go to results and I want to look for the deviation or shearing angle and I say preview. And it will show you that how within this limits of the shearing angle, this is a yellow area which is above warning and it is crossing the limit of 20. So if I say I want to change that, if my fiber can take the shearing up to 25 degrees, now this is okay here. So that is what you can do. You can see the statistics of this uh, to show that what is the minimum maximum shear and the deviation on the supply. You can also go and you can change the scale of the meshing to 0.5 like that and preview. And in the results, 
this is very cool if you can actually animate the producibility results and you can make this video and send it to your shop floor for our technicians to load that technically how you can lay it if i flip it to say this this one so i go to home indicate this point and i take i change my seed point preview results and now it is showing you that you are laying it from that direction so that is how you can optimize based on that. You can change the optimization algorithms from energy to maximum shear, and then you check for it and like that. So there are different type of um, algos which are possible because now Fiber Modeler is built into the platform composite design and manufacturing licenses. And also you are seeing the flat pack. And you don't want to see that, you can hide it, but it is showing you that how this fly will uh, actually be flattened if if that is the seed point now having this created i accept this but this i only did for the first fly if i want to follow the same algorithm for all the flies here this is what i will do i select that i say copy multi select all these and i say paste so i'm saying that follow the same strategy for all these and I say run it. It will run if it is all good, it is good. If it is not, it will tell what is failing and we can individually treat the specific flies based on the, uh, but, but in this where I picked, all of them are okay. So I, for the purpose of this demonstration, I accept this producibility and I say, okay, I okay. But if you go here, if you click on individual flies, you are seeing the flat patterns view of that individual ply also in this but this is just a visualization i have still not created the actual flat patterns which i'm going to do in the next step so here if you expand this stacking you will see that in the stacking for every ply there's a producibility parameters added but in the geometries it is only the composite um, uh, geometry and there is only the contour it, there is no flattened contour yet but you will see it will quickly change so now i will go to this flattening and i will create the flattening for the entire stacking for the purpose of this presentation for the plane let me pick the plane which is my is this was this, well, this plane which is your is that explain and i have already created some points which is in my geo, geo, uh, geo set for placing these flat patterns because i want to separate them if i pick one point then they all will overlap so i select that now i can define these that transfer the draping direction also do the rosette size or i can do the material rule or, or even check the material width that if i have defined the material width then if if the whole ply will be covered in that role or not all those things can be done apply and okay so it is creating the flat patterns here if you see that and for all those 11 plies on that part this is the flat pattern which is created and now if you go back to the stacking here you will see that there's a flattened body created which has this contour and the contour is the outer or inner and sometimes when there are some markers cuts for the darts or everything that can be transferred also depending upon the complexity I'm handling. One more quick thing, if I go to the stacking engineering again, and I say I pick this ply here, and I want to say, I want to preview that, it shows you that preview, you can see that how that ply is laying on the part, it's um, it, it's uh, uh, your direction of your uh, draping, and even the profile like that, that the way, what is the outer outer profile of that flat ply. So all these things for the review purposes. So once the designers have done that, somebody can go and check them later. And I will show you in the end of this presentation that how I can see that in the web app launching from a mobile or a, or an iPad without having Kitia or 3DX uh, platform installed on my system. So once uh, these uh, flat patterns are created, the last thing which I want you to uh, see here is that how I can create the uh, drawings for this, okay? So how will I create the drawings? I go here and I will add a drawing 
The drawing will be linked to the part automatically. You will see that when I go back to the part. But I created a sheet very quickly. I will create three views. So I want to create a front view. And these are some uh, predefined generative view styles which are there to actually create the views for the part which is designed based on the composites methodology in the composite design or manufacturing app. So I say I want to go for the stacking. I go here in the review tools, I pick my 3D section. And for the plane, I pick my uh, YZ plane, which is going across the part like that. And you said that this view is created, which is showing you the actual flies on the 2D drawing in section. Now, the other one, I want to go here and I want to say that I want an isometric view showing the core sampling table and everything. So I go here and I go to core sampling, generative style. I go here. The best thing is to see that your uh, review tool, core sampling is on and I pick on this part. And based on the sample point, sampling points, which we have created, you will see that I will get an isometric view. I put it in the sheet like that, which is showing me the actual tables defining the stacking of the flies at all those four core points which I have created in my review. And you can, uh, you can, this, this is also a view of the drawing. The other one, if you want to create another uh, front view, and this time I want to do for the flattening only, I go to the part again, and here I can go and just uh, uh, pick my, uh, what do you call it, uh, the plane, which is your ZX plane, where you created, created those uh, flat patterns. And you click like that, and this is all the flat patterns are created like that. And this is uh, another view, and you can dimension it, releases for production, and whatever you want to do. Now, one more thing here I can show you. I have a couple of minutes here. I can go and I can show you that how the, if the ply book is created, how you can create that and use it. So this is a ply book example I have, and I will just go and open that. And here you go. And here you have this um, ply book opening and individual sheets showing individual ply in the part view and actually an unfolded view of that. And this is the example of the ply book. So this is what I want to show today on the native client side. Now let's quickly uh, try to flip and go to the uh, web tool to show you that what you can do in your dashboard. So I have a composite dashboard created uh, like that, where I have my own, uh, you know, uh, um, things loaded here. And now if I go here, and I say I want to load, this is a pre uh, part, or you can drag and drop by search and drag, drag and drop here. But for, for this demo, I'm just quickly already kept it there and I loaded that part. This is the 3D annotation eyesight um, application on the web. You can view this from any electronic device where you don't have any kit you installed or any native platform roles installed. This is just a web app. And you can see that you can go and you are looking at the composite uh, parameters. And here you can go to the ply. I click the ply, you can see that even if you want to expand it, you can go like that and you can see individual plies, their definitions, their parameters, uh, which are there. They are further improving this in, in the next uh, drop on the 2020X, they will have that you can even go up to the cut pieces and even do the different type of, the complete navigation or stacking will be possible soon. Also, you can go to the tools and you can turn on this grid and turn off this grid based on that and see that how this part and these uh, flat uh, ply patterns are based on the given size to plan your works, work area or the material or whatever. You can take some, uh, measurements if you want so let's say i want to go for the ply one and i want to take the measurements place from here to here very quickly 
this is all possible and uh, you can keep it and check it again if you go to the grid you will see this like that and you will see the spot in the perspective of this 3d grid and where the part and the uh, apply flatten ply holds and all these things are possible you can go and you can open in the uh, your drawings which you have created you can view that in the 3d markup uh, very easily and uh, uh, so forth so this is where the uh, web application uh, comes into play and whatever you have designed you can view it from the website also not everything but for the purpose of if, if as a shop floor quickly or the production planning you want to see something this is available on your fingertips so this uh, brings me to the end of my today's uh, essentials of composites on 3dx platform presentation i hope uh, you liked it or um, enjoyed it and now we are open for uh, any questions or queries you want to ask based on what you saw today? And please uh, feel free to contact us uh, at the later stage if you like to get any further details on it. So, uh, Mayor, can you turn on the questions and the chat sessions? Yeah. Um, there was one question that came in earlier um, about if the video is going to be available for the presentation so yeah this was recorded and we will be sending you all um, a copy of the recorded webinar so that you can view it in fully in case you're able to to sit down for the whole thing um are there any other questions at the moment anybody no other questions no no other questions Okay, that's good. Great. Okay. We Perfect. will follow up with you. And uh, I really appreciate your time and have a very good, nice evening. Yes, thank you all for attending. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Oh, Nick, it seems like we have one question here. Yeah. Um, any tools specific for infusion? Uh, who is it? Who, uh, okay. Do you know who, which, who is that? Mark Arthur, I believe. Uh, uh, I think he might have left. <laughs> okay. We yeah, can, we can take, uh, take that question and um, I can, uh, yeah, you forward me his link and I will, I will send yeah. him a follow-up email and discuss an answer. Perfect. We will do that then. If uh, nothing else, then um, I think we are good. Yes. Thank you all. Thank you very much.